Hello, I'm Ruby Wallace. I'm an artist and lecturer who lives and works in the west of Ireland. I work with photography and film in an expanded way, often through using installation. I teach photography and visual art and studio practice at the Burren College of Art. And I'm a studio and board member of Engage Art Studios Galway. My practice often uses movement in the body to subvert a traditional perspectival approach to landscape. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about my lecturing approach using the concept of haptic visuality and the use of lens-based media as a means to understand and engage with the rural. In my own work, I've used a range of experimental and experiential approaches to place through walking, swimming and walking, swimming and filming, and slow filmmaking. I've been drawing on the field of phenomenology proposed by philosopher Maurice Merleau-Ponty and the study of daily lived experience. This has led me to contemporary film theorist Laura U. Marx, who plots the link between phenomenology and film experience. For Marx, contemporary visuality, as present in mass media, is typified by being disembodied and disengaged with materiality and touch. Marx developed a method more physical than visual, a sensual engagement with the works of media art, often non-mainstream, in which he writes, the eyes themselves can function like organs of touch. When the students arrive into the Burren, I'm interested in expanding their awareness of art history and the picturesque in relation to the context which they've just arrived and in, in relation to photography. Also how the Irish landscape has been depicted often through a romantic and nostalgic lens, often from a privileged or colonial perspective. I introduce students to a range of lens-based media contemporary artists who've worked in a rural context to look at political, social and art historical issues. For an example, Willie Doherty, whose work looks at memory through photography and video and sound, disrupting the position of the viewer by moving the camera backwards and forwards and disorientating our, our view. And Claire Langan, who looks at abandoned landscapes where nature is reclaiming and using these epic filmmaking strategies to, to trace a, a path through the landscape. And then in a more social way, for example, Kieran O'Garnold living and working in Ballinasloe, a rural Irish town, and working with the community he grew up in. Um, very subjective, often very emotional work. This is quite often a journey of historical discovery for international students. In post-famine, post-colonial, post-recession Ireland, where the echoes of the conflict in the North still reverberate, and have obviously re reawakened in the face of Brexit. Through the varied modules taught by my colleagues and I, students begin their forays into the surrounding environment, often leading them to famine roads, rocky trails, burial grounds, and sites of historical trauma. Also understanding that there is a contemporary island belong beyond cliche and stereotypical media representations. Discussion revolves around the politics and history embedded in landscape and place. Through the lens, they explore themes of closeness and distance, inside and outside, domestic and wild. I strongly encourage students to question the notion of selfhood, power relationships, identity, particularly within representation, and to interrogate the gaze within an approach to both landscape and portraiture. My own doctoral research engaged with artists and filmmakers such as Steve McQueen, Laura Provost and Ben Rivers, who use slowness as a strategy to challenge the dynamic between spectator and subject and increase our physical engagement with the cinematic medium. Most recently, I presented my work at the conference Walking's New Movement at Plymouth University, where I discovered the works of Miranda Wall. Wall literally crawled across the uplands of Aberystwyth using five GoPro cameras, all attached to her body, exploring herself as part animal, part cyborg, to connect with a subversive body and disrupt a linear perspective. 
So she literally crawled across the hills on these long, epic journeys, performative journeys, gathering this footage through the GoPro cameras. Um, she traveled often with a photographer to document these journeys, these performances, and this resulted in a major exhibition and book. In the exhibition, she um, showed the, the footage from the GoPro cameras on screens um, installed in the gallery, five screens and a soundtrack. Really disrupting the picturesque view. This is an example of one of our MFA students, Kay Melissa Kayford. She was interested in using the idea of hapticity in sculptural form. She used photography as a primary research and imaging tool. It was as if we literally had a worm's eye view on the landscape. She was going in so close to the texture of the grass in the extreme close up. She transferred the images to a velvety fabric and created large floor based and wall hung sculptures challenging the viewer to experience both the physicality of her sculptural forms and her image making. She then added a rich and synthetic color palette to the images to disrupt an easy reading of the landscape. Here she is working out the installation of the, of the pieces. And you can see that the images become very otherworldly digital landscapes blurring in some places, um, almost hallucinogenic. These are some of the wall-based sculptural paintings slash sculptures. Some of the questions I asked the students in order to create a more embodied relationship to ph photography are, what, how do you experience the space physically at this moment what surfaces of your body can make contact with the ground and other objects? How might you change that perception by adjusting your posture? How do you feel? Apathy, discomfort, boredom, alertness, excitement. What do you touch, sense, not just through your hands, but also through the bottoms of your feet, the tips of your nose, your ears, your lips? The idea of engagement with the haptic is to disrupt the dominant mode of representation and engage with all the senses, to find alternative modes of perception, often through very close looking. This is one of Melissa's sculptures. It's a combination of a concrete, um, con concrete plinth with a soft cushion printed with the landscape. Another example of a student engaging with the haptic was recent graduate MFA Morgan Madison, who was looking at the everyday in a close-up way. She says, I become, became excited by a defect in the lens of my grandfather's camera, which led to every shot possessing a black line through the bottom of the image. While the moment may have faded, it flowed into the next, myself and the camera linking each other. The black line is a reminder of this connection, the entropic quality of being instills fragility on not only my surroundings, but in myself as well. And she talks about how Martin Heidegger argues in his work, Being and Time, a person comes to know and understand themselves through their presence in the world. Nothing lasts, yet everything continues on in some new form, which reveals the vulnerability of life, but also a depth and complexity that unfolds not only around, but within oneself. And these are some of the images where you can see the, the black line. And also um, in one of the, the images, there's a big, big thumbprint, which she kept on one of the big prints, really allows us to connect with the trace of the body and the physicality of, of, the, um, of the image, the connection of the materiality. Many photography students are interested in materiality of the photograph, contemporary approaches to using analog, using the darkroom to develop, returning also to the sense of touch, using their hands, mark making as a reaction to the pervasive perfection and glossiness of the digital medium. Also bringing the image off the screen into connection with their bodies. Another of our recent graduates, Zola Kell, 
spent months experimenting with alternative forms of photography, cameraless cyanotype, natural pigments and exposures. Using found fragments of landscape, in these images she worked with seaweeds, leaves, grasses and found phenomena. There's really been a massive interest in a slower, more tactile mode of making. In reaction to the speed, it's also a way of engaging the spectator in a haptic experience, moving away from the photograph or film as an empirical document towards facilitating a viewer with more of an experience of a sensory embodied perception. Kel writes of this work, the act of paying attention allows us to shift focus from the narrowness of the self to a wider vision of being merely a facet of a living, breathing, wildly complex biosphere. By broadening my understanding, critically examining my position and placing myself within the environment, I hope to ensure that my relationship to my resources is, in, is intimate. Zola was also very interested in the art and eco ecological side of things. And uh, many of her prints used non-chemical forms of photography. So really using the sunlight to expose these images. In 2018, Foam Gallery Amsterdam held an exhibition entitled Back to the Future, in which contemporary artists were experimenting with 19th century techniques, making work through cyanotype, photograms, collage, and so on. These experimental forms play into the language of both painting and sculpture. These tactile embodied approaches to lens-based media can be useful in finding new forms of knowledge. With the ubiquity of photography at the moment, it seems that many artists are interested in disrupting that using collage, cutting, and changing the surface of the photograph. I found through revisiting the landscape through my own practice and through teaching to be of wider value in its potential for facilitating and interrelated knowledge between the body and the intellect. This can open channels to less represented marginal spaces. Haptic experience and sensory research can allow an acknowledgement of alternative perspectives, which do not always operate through rationality or really linear time structures. That representation is flexible. It doesn't need to be formalized through one dominant language, power structure, sense, or singular perspective. Thank you for listening.